Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this tutorial, we're going to have a look at the free lines plugin that is available from FX Factory. Now, with this plugin, as you can see here in some of the examples, here we can create some of these very cool line animations in Final Cut Pro without going into a motion graphics application like After Effects or Apple Motion. And we've got some real nice control over the different types of lines we can create. So we're going to jump in here. We've got a few clips on our timeline, and we're going to begin by having a look at some of the basic animations that you can do. So we'll bring up our lines plugin in our type and generators, and down in the generators here. We have the Lines plugin installed, and as I mentioned, this is a completely free plugin available from FX Factory. And essentially, we have a few different styles of line and a number of useful options for those different styles. So we have the hand-drawn style of line here, and you can see some of these are straight lines, some of them are curved lines, and we also have some additional options for controlling those as well. So let's drag one down to the timeline, and we'll zoom in a little bit here so we can see what we're working on. So once we have that down on the timeline, it's essentially going to play through for the duration of that generator as it appears on the timeline. So in this case, three seconds. And we can move the endpoints of this line with the on-screen controllers to control where the line begins and ends. So by modifying these endpoints, we can decide whether we want a nice really long line or a shorter line. And as we increase the length of the line, then the animation is going to happen a little bit faster. And then if we want the animation to happen a bit more quickly, we can shorten that. So in this example, the animation is going to happen over the whole duration of the generator on the timeline. So as we shorten it, it's going to get quicker. So let's just delete this first example from the timeline and we're going to drag down another one of these styled lines. So you can see with this line, we've got some options here up in the inspector. And if we pull our playhead to the middle here, so now with the playhead in the middle here, we can see what we're changing up in the inspector. Now we can change the width of the line. We can adjust the color of that line. We can modify the speed that this animation will animate on uh, at the beginning. So with the full option here, the animation is going to happen over the duration of the whole generator on the timeline. And then we can have it slow, half, quick, and instant. And with the instant option, essentially we're going to have it animate on nice and quick, and then we're going to have it hold for a period of time at the end. So with this line, you can see we've got a few different points along it. So essentially what we can do here is modify these points to adjust our curve. And so we can create a nice curved wavy line here, really having some nice control over these points. So let's have a look at somewhere we could use this. So we've got this clip of the skateboarder here and I'm going to delete this original animation from the timeline and we'll begin from scratch. And we're going to get our line to draw on as our skateboarder comes up the ramp and then launches himself up into the air here. And we're going to use a couple of lines here and just look at how we can modify those lines to follow the action. So we're going to come up to our generators here in the lines and we're going to grab our styled line 4 and drag it down to the timeline. And with the playhead hovering over this we're going to be able to see those on-screen controllers where we can modify our line. And we're just going to move our playhead back to the beginning when he's right at the bottom of the ramp here and this is where we're going to start our animation. Then we'll just nudge our clip back a bit and we're going to have our first point down here. And we'll zoom in a little bit on the timeline so we can see this a bit more clearly. And we're going to come ahead in time and we're going to get that second line to animate to here. And then we'll come ahead again to place our third point. Just move this up here. And then we'll get up to the top where he's ready to drop and we'll move that final point up to here. And we'll just use the left cursor to nudge back one frame here so we can see that last frame. And we'll move that last point up to the skateboard here. If we scrub back here, you can see now that as we move forward, we essentially have that line following him as he moves up the ramp. So if your animated line is not perfect the first time, then you can always come back, nudge the on-screen controllers to get your line animating on perfectly. And we can keep playing with these points until we're happy with how the animation is working. And we have some other really useful controls up in the inspector, such as being able to change the width of our line, controlling the color. And here for this line, we're going to pick out this nice bright magenta for our line. We'll widen this a little bit more so it really stands out. So we'll have one line following the skateboarder up, and then we'll add another line to follow the skateboarder down. So as he starts to come down, we'll add this new line, and then we've got the first, second, third, and fourth spot here. So we'll move the first point of our new line back up to the top and we'll scroll along the timeline here. So there's no keyframing in this animation, we're just essentially eyeballing what we want. So we'll keep moving forward and we'll bring this one down here. And you can see there's a little bit of adjustment here to get this just right. So let's just scrub through here and see what we have. So that is looking pretty decent. And we are going to increase the width of this second line too. So we'll just slide this along to get it nice and wide. 
and then we'll select a different color for this line. We're going to go for this nice blue this time. And we'll just zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole of this clip. And we'll play this through. So that's looking pretty good. One thing I'd like to do here is hold the line on screen after the animation has finished. So I'm just going to come to the end here. And I'm just using the up and down cursor and the left and right cursor to find that last frame of the clip. So we're going to group these into compound clips, which is going to allow us to hold that frame at the end of the animation. So I'm going to do Option and G to turn that bottom layer into a compound clip. And then I'm going to do Shift and H, which is going to create a hold frame, which will then hold that line at the end of the animation. And I'm just going to trim this down to shorten that hold a little bit. And then to fade the line, I'm going to add a dissolve transition. So Command and T to add that default transition. And then we get that first line fading out as the other line begins to draw on. So we'll do the same for this second animated line. So Option or Alt and G. And then we'll come to the end here. I'm going to come back one frame using the left cursor and then do Shift and H. And it's important to make it into a compound clip before you try and do that frame hold. So we'll trim this and then do Command T to add the transition. So one thing we want to be able to do here with these two animations is to control the speed of everything. So we've got this slow motion clip playing through with our animation. I want to be able to run that a little bit faster at the beginning and then also again at the end of the animation. So once I have everything lined up, I'm going to select all of my clips and the video in the background as well. And then we're going to wrap all of these up into a compound clip. So Alt or Option and G. So what this means now that I have this all in a compound clip is that I can control the speed throughout this entire clip. So we can speed up or slow down things more fluidly. So I'm going to come to this first line just as it's about to draw on. And to move through my edit one frame at a time, I'm holding down the K key and tapping J or L to move forwards or backwards so I can find the exact frame I want to be on. So once I've found the right spot, I am going to press the O key to mark an out point on my timeline. And that's going to mean I can modify the speed of the beginning of this compound clip independently of the rest of the clip. So with the beginning sped up, we're now going to let the middle of this clip play through at normal speed. And then for the last part of the clip, I'm going to mark an in point, which is going to select that end range. And we can then modify the speed of the end of that clip. So with those refinements to the speed, let's play this through. And that is looking pretty sweet. So you can see here we've got this ability to create these nice fluid lines, control the speed so we can get that timing just right. So let's have a look at this next example to see how we can use these animated lines in a different way. So I'm going to find a spot in this video where we're going to draw a circle around these two horses. So I'm going to use the six point line for this example. So I'm just going to scrub to the end here so I can see all my points. So this middle handle here allows me to rotate my line and also to move it around on the video. So I'm just going to move this here and then we're going to move these points one by one until we create a loop or circle around these two horses. So you can see we can use this lines plugin to draw simple lines or to draw shapes or circles around different objects on your video. And really it's very useful to be able to have this kind of hand drawn animation that you can drop right on the timeline inside Final Cut Pro. Now that looks pretty good so we're just going to play this through. And that is looking pretty great. So we've got our animation set up here, drawing this circle on. And we can modify the speed of our animation here. Uh, the full option will mean that it animates the entire duration of the clip on the timeline. We can also change it to quick or half, which means you'll get this shorter animation at the beginning and then a hold of that shape at the end. I'm just going to adjust this so we fade this out just before that line touches the edge of the horses. So trim this back and then do Command of T so that we have a nice little fade at the end there. Let's play this through again. So that's looking pretty good and you can see we've got a nice level of control in there. We could add a hold in there if we wanted to. So we've got some other options for these lines as well. So we can control the style of these lines. So at the moment we have the basic pencil on now. We can also use the ballpoint pen or the highlighter. So we've got these nice different kind of styles. I like the basic pencil for this particular example. And let's click on the color here and choose a nice orange. So a nice rustic feel here. So for the next example, let's come ahead in time and look at this lady paddling. So for this particular clip, we're going to use the lines tool to highlight the angle and length of the paddle. We're going to play through. So here, if I do Shift and H, I can freeze frame it. And this is where I'm going to have my line draw on. So I'm going to come to my Lines plugin in the Generators and drag down the Vector Line. 
and we'll zoom in here a little bit and essentially this line is going to draw from point to point. I'm going to lift my first point up to the top here and my next point down to the bottom. Then we'll just extend the hold a little bit. So let's play this through. So a bit slow, I think we want the animation to be finished by around about this point. So I'm going to drag the end point back and then we'll play this through again. So that's great, we've got the animation happening in exactly the time we want it to happen. If we want to hold this clip at the end, firstly we'll come to the very last frame of this clip. So we'll move to the end and then just come back one frame by using the left cursor. And we'll do Option and G to make it a compound clip. And that will group it together. And now we can do Shift and H to hold that frame at the end. And you can see we get that line drawing on nicely and then that nice hold frame at the end before we continue with the paddling. So there's some nice things we can do here once we've got this line animating on. I'm thinking particularly it would be interesting to have the line flow behind her head and her shoulders. And um, so we're gonna add a little bit of transparency to this. So we'll come to our effects on the right hand side. We'll come down to the masks and we're looking for the draw mask tool here, which we'll drag onto our line animating on. So with the draw mask here, we are gonna draw around the area that we want to hide. So essentially drawing dot to dot and then making sure you go back to the first red dot that you've added to complete the shape. And that will then allow you to add transparency um, to that shape. And we're gonna come to the inspector and inverse the selection. So it removes the middle there. So now we get this nice effect where the line draws on, um, but draws on behind her head and shoulder. So let's do Shift and H to zoom out. And we're gonna have a look at a couple of other options for our lines plugin. So for this next example, we're going to use the vector line six um, to kind of fit the, the business theme of this part of the video. So we're going to modify this animated line and arrow um, to look like a graph drawing itself on to kind of fit the theme of this video. So we'll trim this clip down from the end and zoom in a little bit here on our timeline. So we'll come back to the beginning of this clip here and we're going to modify these on-screen controllers. We'll drag this across to the left and then we're going to have this kind of gradually move upwards, kind of zigzagging upwards by modifying the on-screen controllers. So we'll come to the inspector here and increase the line width a little bit and just move our playhead forward so we can see what we're modifying. We'll change the color as well. And this red looks perfect. So at the moment, this is running over two seconds. I'm just gonna trim this down a little bit so it actually runs a bit faster. So you may notice at the end here, we sometimes get a strange offset of the arrow or sometimes the arrow actually disappears. So I'm gonna come up to the inspector here and increase the end cap size. So increase the size of the arrow. So you can see here that even with the adjustments, the dashed line isn't working perfectly. So once we've played this through, we're gonna come back and make some modifications. So the main thing here is that the corners in our zigzag uh, don't look that great. So we're gonna change it from a dashed line to a solid line. And then we can go ahead and tweak some of the positions of our on-screen controllers just to get that line looking nice. Then let's play this through. Perfect, so you can see now we've got this nice animation. So also, as we've done before, we can group this together in a compound clip, so Option and G, and then Shift and H to hold that last frame which now leaves us with an animation of the line and a hold at the end there. And now that hold leaves us some space to animate on some text or add other elements into this design. So we're gonna go on now to have a look at a cool technique which allows to blend the transparency that we have with these lines that draw on um, with some text. So we're essentially gonna get some text to paint itself on screen. So let's do Shift and Z to fit our whole timeline. And I'll stretch out my hold here. So we've got our animation here and we're gonna jump up to the type and generators at the top left. So we'll scroll up here, we're gonna to come to our titles and we're looking for the bumper and opener section where we'll find our basic title which we'll drag down to the timeline. And we'll just trim that down to fit the length of our animation and arrow on screen. So the compositing technique that we're gonna use here is gonna allow us to blend the text with our lines animation. So we're gonna to come to the inspector at the top right here and we will change our type and we'll move this down here. And for the type style, I'm gonna to go to my 2D styles and choose the bold option. And here we'll just drop the type size down a little bit. So what we're gonna do here is actually use the lines to draw on our layer of type here. And we'll need two or three lines to actually get this effect to work. So I'm gonna come back to my lines generators here. And we're gonna drag down one of the three point lines to our timeline. 
and I'm going to stretch this out to the duration of my type layer and we're going to make this a nice thick line. So we'll come up to the inspector at the top right and we'll modify the writing width. And we'll modify the on-screen controllers here so it runs right across the length of our type layer there. So here we're going to duplicate the line that we've already created. So we're just going to hold down the Alt or Option key to duplicate that layer. And with that duplicated layer selected, I'm going to modify the on-screen controllers so that it animates across different points. And then we'll add just one last one here to get this to work. So we'll modify the on-screen controllers for this so it covers a different part of the type. So essentially we can combine these two layers so that the lines that are drawing on reveal the type behind. And we're going to switch the animation speed to the instant option, changing it for all three of these different layers. And we'll just stagger these different animation layers a little bit and we'll get all those endpoints lined up nicely as well. So I'm going to bring my type up to the top here. And then with this type layer, I'm going to use its transparency to blend it with the background animations. So with our type layer selected, we're going to come up to our inspector, select the video tab there, and then we're going to change the blend mode to stencil alpha. So essentially we now have all the layers below that type hidden. And that means it's also hiding the two layers that we have at the bottom here, which we don't want to be hidden. And we can control that transparency with a compound clip. So we're going to select all of these, right click, make a new compound clip. And now the layers that we didn't wrap up in that compound clip will be visible. So when we play that through, you can see we're starting to get some of that nice texture as the type paints itself on. So you can see that is playing through nicely. It's a little bit slow at the beginning. So I'm going to speed that beginning bit up. So I'm going to find the end of the type animation here. And I'm going to go and grab my range selection tool. And I'll select the beginning of that clip. And then we can go ahead and change the speed um, of that beginning part of the clip. So we'll come up here, come to fast, and we'll change that to 200%. And then we'll play this through. So you can see we get this really nice effect of the painting on of the type by using those layer modes to blend the different layers of transparency. And even once we've created this animation, we have complete control. So if we double click into here, you can see we can still access those individual layers. Um, so for instance, if we wanted to make each of these a different color, um, we can come in there, we can do that. We can also obviously modify the control points on screen as well to move where the animation is happening. We'll create a duplicate layer here just to kind of fill in some of the edge gaps that we're getting so that we have a kind of type all drawing on nicely and we'll select a different color for this one as well. So let's see what we've got. We'll come back to our main timeline and then we'll drop the opacity of our background layer there just so our type stands out a bit more when we play this through. And you can see we've got a really nice effect there of that type painting itself on. I think we can increase the scale there a bit um, and play around with uh, the effects a bit more but overall that's looking very pretty good we've got that nice level of control over the speed the animation is happening um, and we can control it really nicely so that's looking pretty nice so you can see here with the lines plugin we have some really great tools here that we can combine with other effects and generators and type in final cut pro 10 the Lines tool is super easy to use with the on-screen controllers, so I definitely recommend downloading it and checking it out. If you have any questions about this tutorial, about using the Lines plugin, or about different things that you're trying to do in Final Cut Pro 10, then do leave a comment below, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.